Hello, and welcome to this introductory tutorial on slide two. Today, we'll be going over the basics of slide two features and walk you through this example of how to build a soil profile with a borehole. The soil profile option is very useful for models that have complex material layering over which you'd like to define several different slope excavation scenarios. For example, an open pit mine being excavated in stages. The soil profile option works by allowing you to define a master profile for your material boundaries and ground surface. This is then used as a base template over which you superimpose different slope geometries. This feature is particularly useful when used with multi-scenario modeling, which we're gonna go over how to use. In today's example, we'll also be using the borehole manager to create soil geometry with multiple layers. So without further ado, let's get started. We'll begin the tutorial by turning on the soil profile option. This is done where we start all slide two models in your project settings. You can access your project settings by clicking on the icon in the toolbar or going to the analysis menu. Click on the Soil Profile tab on the left side of the dialog and then select the Use Soil Profile option. Now, go to the Methods tab to select which analysis method to use for this model. For this example, we'll use Spencer and GLE. If you go to the Scenarios tab, you should see by default that Multiple Scenarios is selected. This is the multi-scenario modeling feature we mentioned before. Just make a note of this as we'll be exploring this option later in the tutorial. Now, go ahead and click OK and close the dialog. You'll notice that a Profile tab has now appeared in the Workflow tabs. If you click through the Workflow tabs, you can see how the different functions of Slide 2 have been separated into logical categories depending at what point you're at in building your model. As you've just seen, different workflow tabs will appear based on your selections in the project settings. In order for us to define and edit the profile extents and boundaries, we need to select the Profile tab. The Profile extents define a rectangular region which sets the limits of the profile boundaries. They are displayed on screen as these dotted lines. You can enter and edit the profile extents in this sidebar on the left of the screen. For this example, we'll use the default values of left equals 0, right equals 20, top equals 0, and bottom equals minus 10. We're now going to define our soil profile using the borehole manager. You can open this up by clicking on the icon in the toolbar or selecting borehole editor in the profile menu. On the left side of the dialog, you can see the list of boreholes. For this example, we'll be creating a total of three boreholes. To add the first borehole, click on the green plus icon. Enter a horizontal location of x equals 0 and the borehole top elevation as minus 10. Create four material layers by clicking on Insert Layer Below. Assign the layers as materials 1, 2, 3, and 4. For each layer, enter a thickness of 10 meters. Now we'll add the second borehole. For this borehole, enter a horizontal location of x equals 50 meters and a borehole top elevation of minus 3. This time, we'll be entering different thicknesses for each layer. For material 1, enter 10 meters. For material 2, enter 8. For material 3, enter 10. And for material 4, enter 8. Now we'll add the final borehole. For this borehole, enter a horizontal location of x equals 100 and a borehole top elevation of 0. For the four material layers, enter the following thicknesses. For material 1, enter 15. For material 2, enter 10. For material 3, enter 5. And for material 4, enter 10. If we click on the Settings button, we can view the interpolation settings, which, by default, is set to linear. With this option, the program can interpolate between the boreholes to define the soil profile boundaries at the top of the model. We'll talk more about these settings at the end of the tutorial, 
but for now, make sure Interpolate Top Surface is turned on and click OK. Click OK again to close the dialog and you should now see the following model. Next up, we're going to define the properties of the material layers. For this example, we're going to keep things simple and make the lower layers stronger by defining a high cohesion value, and the upper layers will have lower strength properties. To define the material properties, just click on Define Materials in the toolbar or select Define Materials in the Properties menu. For each layer, we're just going to define the cohesion value and phi value. We'll leave the rest of the values at their defaults. For material 1, enter cohesion equals 10 and phi equals 35. For material 2, the weak layer, enter cohesion equals 5 and phi equals 25. For material 3, enter cohesion equals 40 and phi equals 35. Finally, for material 4, enter cohesion equals 50 and phi equals 35. Then just click OK to close the dialog. Now we're going to switch workflow tabs to the geometry tab. This is where we'll define the external boundary for the model. You'll notice that when you select the geometry tab, the profile boundaries and materials are now displayed in a semi-transparent shade since we're no longer in the profile mode. To add the external boundaries to your model, go to the Boundaries menu and select Add External Boundary. You'll be given two options, adding as a polyline or as a window. For this example, use the first method and select Add External as Polyline option. To enter the coordinates for your boundary, you can click on the points on the screen or enter them into the command prompt in the bottom right of the window. You can also type T into the command prompt to type the coordinates into a table. For this example, we'll use the table option. Type T into the command prompt and press Enter. Now enter the following coordinates. 0 and minus 50, 100 and minus 50, 100 and minus 5, 60 and minus 5, 35 and minus 20, and 0 and minus 20. Click OK to close the dialog. You can press Enter or click on the last edge, and you should be able to see the soil profile boundaries have been cropped by this external boundary. Now let's move on to the Surfaces Workflow tab. For the Slip Surface Search, we'll be using the Cuckoo method for non-circular slip surfaces. To select this option, go to the Surfaces menu and select Surface Options. For your surface type, choose the Non-Circular option. For the search method, select Cuckoo Search. For the Cuckoo Search options, we'll keep all the default values. We'll now save and compute the file to run the analysis. Go to File, and then Save to save the file as Tutorial 25. Then click on the Compute icon to run the analysis. Once you're done computing the model, we can open up the interpret window to view the results. The interpret program is the post-processing module for interpreting and visualizing the data from your analysis results. The program has many different options for visualizing the data, which you can explore after this tutorial. For this example, you'll see when you open the interpret window that the global minimum safety factor is around 1.22 and that the non-circular surface goes through the toe of the slope and the weak layer. If you want to see all the slip surfaces generated by the Cuckoo search, go to the data menu and select all surfaces. As mentioned before, the Soil Profile option works particularly well when used with Slide 2's Multi-Scenario Modeling feature. Together, you can use the Multi-Scenario Modeling option to test and analyze different slope geometries while maintaining a constant soil profile. 
For this example, we'll use the soil profile we just built to demonstrate how multi-scenario modeling works. Begin by returning to the Slide 2 model program. Go to the document viewer on the left side of the screen and right-click on Group 1. Select Rename and change the name to Slope Angle 31 degrees. Now we want to duplicate this group. Right-click on the group again and select Duplicate Group. Change the name of this new group to Slope Angle 45 degrees. Make sure this new group is selected and will now change the angle of the slope. To change the angle, right-click on the vertex at the toe of the slope and select Move To. You'll notice that the soil profile has become visible, and, as you move the mouse, the external boundary vertex will interactively follow the mouse. Rather than entering the new point with the mouse, we're going to enter the coordinates into the command prompt at the bottom of the screen. Type 45 minus 20 as your coordinates and press Enter. You'll notice now that the angle of the slope has changed. To look at these two models side by side, we're going to tile the two views. To do that, go to the Windows menu and select Tile Vertically. You can now see how you've created two models which are identical except for the slope angle. Now we're going to once again compute the models. Click on the Compute icon. It will prompt you to save once again. When computing multi-scenario models, it will ask you to select which scenarios you wish to compute. Make sure both scenarios are selected, and then click OK to run the analysis. Open up the interpret program again, and you can see the different results in the two scenarios. You'll notice that the slope angle 45 scenario produced a new factor of safety of 0.85, which means increasing the slope angle has caused the slope to become unstable. Now that we've covered the basics, I want to show you some more advanced features about building a soil profile from multiple borehole data. We'll begin by opening up one of the tutorial files. Go to the Open icon, click on the Tutorials folder, and open the file Tutorial 25 Profile from Boreholes. Now go back to the Profile Workflow tab and open the borehole editor just like we did before. In this example, there are four boreholes being used instead of three. Click on the Settings button to view the interpolation settings. By default, this has been set to linear, which is why we have straight lines at the top of the boundary. Change the interpolation method to Thin Plate Spline and click OK to close both of the dialogues. You'll notice that the interpolated boundaries are now smooth instead of linear because of the spline curve fit of the borehole data. If you go back to the borehole editor and click on Settings, we can turn off the interpolation of the top surface by unchecking the box. Click OK to close the dialog and you'll see the upper material assignment now extends to the upper profile extent. By turning off the interpolation feature, this allows you to define your own soil profile boundary. You can do this by clicking on the Add Soil Profile Boundary option and use the mouse or coordinates to define the boundary. This concludes the Slide 2 introductory tutorial. We hope you learned some valuable skills today that will help you with building your own Slide 2 model. Thanks for watching!